Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Hey, firstly, uh, apologies for um, not ha having put up a video for, for a reasonable amount of time, but I've been dealing with, or um, well, been quite busy really, with uh, job changes and uh, a potential, or in fact, more than likely, a, um, a shift coming up in location. So uh, that's um, been quite busy here. But in the meantime, what I uh, have been playing around with quite a bit, which I'll sort of touch on now, as well as um, have a bit of a talk about some ideas that I'd like to do uh, coming up is firstly I've been mean, playing around with the digital modes so uh, down here is a little um, sort of breakout board I guess for the Raspberry Pi so just to sort of try and keep the the, um, the cabling nice and tidy because it can turn into a bit of a rat's nest so Raspberry Pi 4 there uh, running the likes of um, FL Digi um, WSJT um, JS8 call and the like uh, running on that uh, in terms of the I.O. and the interface to the uh, transceiver, uh, two things we have uh, on a PTT side coming out of here is just a little standard USB to um, RS-232 uh, adapter board there. So what I'm picking up there is uh, in the software of, 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 of I'm using the DTR low. So when I, uh, when I key that um, particular um, DTR line goes low and uh, that causes the relay to switch which in turn then keys the uh, the transceiver so that's what I'm using for that one uh, in terms of the audio I.O. I'm just using an external uh, USB sound card there which the Raspberry Pi just automatically out of the box detects uh, and then offers that up to the various um, uh, COM software as a, um, as a um, an allowable I.O. source for that which is good uh, and it works really well. So on the, uh, in terms of um, um, isolation between uh, the Raspberry Pi and the, the radio, which is this grey line here for the uh, transmit and receive audio, uh, just using that same configuration as I've done in the past, two um, isolation transformers uh, and some uh, coupling capacitors there, uh, and works really well. So like I say, this is just the whole, the whole idea of here is just to keep things nice and stable and uh, to stop things getting a bit sort of messy when it comes to all the wiring. So that's been quite fun and just using for the radio on that that uh, homebrew 80-40 meter um, uh, SSB rig which is uh, certainly going well. The other thing I've been playing around with is is a I uh, came across a little uh, 240 by 240 screen which um, I thought I would use in this old vintage flash unit here so what I'm going to do with this is, um, I've gutted it, um, and I'm going to convert this into a little clock, um, very similar to what I've done over here in the past, and just um, basing this around the, the DS3231 uh, real-time clock there, um, as opposed to what I have done several times in the past, just using a little GPS module here, and then tapping into the RMC word that comes out to to pass out the, the, the time and the date. In this particular case, like I say, just going to use a, a real-time clock there. Um, going to stick with using a, a 5 volt Arduino, it's the one that's easily in the box, uh, which will also make powering it nice and simple from coming off the back of a, um, a wall wart for powering it. These displays are 3.3 uh, volts displays, so just a simple um, voltage divider network there. Uh, to drop that 5 volts down to the 3.3 uh, the that's required for uh, that particular display. Um, I've got two of those displays and the second one's actually, you can't quite see it there, it's already mounted in here ready to go. So just got to um, basically finish it off really. So that's that's the other thing which I've been playing around with, just to, uh, to sort of itch that, that uh, sort of creative side I guess. So in terms of next builds, there's, there's two things I want to do. The, the first one is um, I've been thinking about for a long time to build a automatic antenna tuner. So I do have up here a um, a manual antenna tuner. So when I say manual, manual uh, variants of the, the inductors and manual on the uh, the two capacitors. But I've always wanted to play around with uh, making an automatic tuner. So I'm thinking about basing that around uh, a simple L match with the, our inductor and our capacitor and then having 
um, a series of switches that will then switch in and out um, inductance and switch in and out capacitance um, driven by an Arduino which is sensing probably through a, a modified Brun switch a bridge I should say uh, the SWR to then work out uh, what the best combination is is to minimize that SWR so these these switches here my initial thought was to uh, use these really quite inexpensive relay modules that are designed to talk to um, 5 volt um, uh, microcontrollers uh, really easy to use just, just give the whole board uh, 5 volts and then as you apply uh, an earth to the various uh, relay um, IO pins then the relays close um, and then I'd use obviously the, the contacts there to um, switch in and switch out um, at least the inductance and potentially the capacitance. Now I say potentially the capacitance because I'm just wondering if I want to have a play around with uh, a NEMA 17 um, stepper motor and a variable capacitor. So rather than having individually switched capacitance levels being switched in, have a variable capacitor which the stepper motor is then driving um, to, to get a, 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 a certainly a more granular change in capacitance. So that's just debating which ways to go there. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I suspect this method here using the relays will be quite fast in terms of switching those in and out, uh, whereas the the uh, a, the stepper motor driven capacitor may be a bit slower in, in terms of coming up with a, um, a solution by means of a um, the lowest SWR. So I don't know if anybody else had experience in that, I'd be keen to know. Otherwise, yeah, it's all about experimenting, so um, I'll make something up and start to play around with. So that's that's the first project, um, or one of the projects that I wouldn't mind doing um, sooner rather than later, because I, I haven't done that before and I want to give it, give it a go. The second thing I want to play around with is to build another um, SSB rig. But in this particular case, what I want to do, and I'll try and explain it here, um, is, is to use as a basis these four pole double throw relays. Not this particular one here, I, I want to use a different configuration which has the poles um, all in a line. So one, two, three, four, as opposed to two poles stacked. So one, two, and then below that the other two poles. Now, what, why I'm thinking about using that is at the moment, what I've been doing with these very simple single conversion super heterodyne receivers, so antenna over here, our, our bandpass filter, first mixer, our IEF strip, our product detector, and then our, our, our audio frequency amplifier on receive, and on transmit, our microphone, back through the same system, and then mixed up through our power amplifier and out the antenna there. What I've been using to switch the RF around the system is mechanical relays, um, not, not too dissimilar to, to these. And the reason why I've done that is to keep things nice and simple in an effort to try and encourage others to give it a go. Um, I have used um, a while back uh, diode switching and while it worked, um, I felt that the additional components required to make that work, uh, for example the, the RF blocking inductors and the like, uh, and the slight loss across the um, the diodes themselves, I just felt that it was probably just worth us to uh, keep pursuing uh, these simple relays um, as opposed to the diode switching. Um, it's, it's something I will get back to at some point in time, but at the moment it works well. Now, as you can see though, in order to um, share, as an example, this IEF strip between both the uh, transmit and the receive, um, acknowledging that this will be a unidirectional IEF strip and not using bi-directional amplifiers, so just if, if I want to have the RF going in one direction only, then I have to have um, a switching relay on either side to make sure that the RF is always going through that strip in the one direction. Um, yeah. <clears throat> also there's clearly um, additional relays required to switch that particular port of that product detector uh, between the, the uh, speaker and the amplifier for that uh, on receive and then on transmit when this turns into a balanced modulator uh, that port there between the two. 
and over here of course we're now switching the input to that bandpass filter there on receive from our antenna or transmit feeding it back through our power amplifier low pass filter and back out again so there's relays all over the place and as you can see here there's seven total so my thinking is and what I'd like to try and do is see if I can reduce seven individual relays down to two so two four pole double throw relays now I'm getting these uh, they haven't quite turned up in the country yet but um, for a princely cost of a dollar thirty each New Zealand so basically nothing so that's why I want to try and use those because they're inexpensive and if I can get to just use two then clearly two is a whole lot better than seven in terms of keeping the numbers down the noise down um, and, and, and the overall size of the radio but there will be some challenges um, and what I've tried to pick down here it's not, not really for, to talk about here on the movie um, or the video I should say but it's more just me trying to think about how can I get cunning with my available eight individual poles that I have um, so I minimize the opportunity for signals on the output of an amplifier from feeding their way back into the input of an amplifier in this particular case this IF strip here it's quite easy with an arrangement like this that that high power RF on the output of the IEF strip finds its way back to the input and we have feedback. So what I've tried to do is have um, separation of lines or switches with similar frequency signals going through it. I've tried to separate those by distance um, in terms of physical distance on, on the poles for that particular relay. So that's what I've tried to depict here. So these, the numbering sequence up here aligns with this. I'm just trying to separate, like I say, um, IFs and RFs and, and DCs. And, and over here, audio. Um, clearly, in the between there, as, as wires are joining the two relays together, there's the potential for coupling. Um, but again, if I have these um, orientated in, 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 in the right way, then I should be able to minimize that coupling risk. Uh, probably won't work, it may work, I don't know, I don't know if I won't try, so uh, it's something I want to give a go. So that's that's something. Now in also in doing this particular rig here, the other thing that I want to have a, a play around with is to get a much better understanding of, uh, of third order intercept. So you, you'll know from my previous videos that um, I have a, a ponderance just to use the simple 3904 based a common emitter amplifier. Uh, it's easy to analyze, uh, it's easy to build, um, and it, it's just easy. However, um, I haven't really taken the time to look at that particular circuit that I have been using to see from a linearity point of view how good it is um, from a third order intercept point. So what I'd like to do this time is to have a much better uh, or a greater look at that um, in, in this particular build. So what do I, what do I mean by that? So uh, in order to do that third order intercept I need to feed two um, signals into the amplifier and then using the spectrum analyzer I can then analyze the third order products coming out and to, to, to basically then work out if it's good, bad or indifferent. Now, the signal generator I have over here is quite good, and, and hopefully, fingers crossed, I can use this, this facility that this SIGGEN allows me to combine, for any of one of the two outputs, the two channels. So in this particular case, if I'm just looking at channel one, at the moment, I've said the output of channel one through this little um, software switch here is just channel 1, in other words the, the, the frequency that's been set up on channel 1. If I push it again I get channel 1 plus channel 2 and that's why the signal over here has changed which I'm wondering because no longer have I got just one frequency coming out of our channel 1, I've actually now got two signals. Um, <clears throat> the first one is 8.8 uh, .8 and the second one is 9.2 roughly. Um, and on the SIGGEN, say again, the spectrum analyzer, that's what we're seeing over here. So I can go back to just our, our signal, our single frequency coming out, 
And then if I was to combine the two, I then have two signals coming out. So what I'm hoping is that I can do exactly that, uh, in other words, using that, having the output going into the amplifier, and then using the spectrum analyzer to analyze the output. So that's, that's another thing that I want to do with that particular project is to, to better understand, like I say, um, the calculations of and the measurements of third order intercept products um, and what does that mean for amplifier design. So that's the other spin off. Okay, well, I think I've rambled on way longer than um, I wanted to, so I guess that's just, like I say, a, a bit of an update on what I've been playing around with. Um, which is you know, the digital modes over here with the Raspberry Pi, a um, bit of a creative um, burst over here in terms of making another little clock there based on the, the real time clock. Um, that shouldn't take too long to finish. And then, uh, depending on how long or how things are going to go with job changes and house moves, I would d dictate um, how fast I can get into playing around with these next builds. Anyway, so that's, that's, that's the update. Um, I'll say 73 here. Um, and hope everybody's staying safe with the whole COVID situation. And I will put another video up once dust settles. And I've got a bit of a way ahead on, uh, on the next project. Until then, like I say, take care. And we'll see you shortly. Cheers all.